Carol Martin made Australian political history last year, becoming the first Aboriginal woman to take her seat in a parliament. And if Carol has her way, it won't be the last time she enters the record books. Her electorate in Western Australia covers an area the size of Victoria, from Broome to Fitzroy Crossing and up to Wyndham. John Collis travelled to the Kimberley to profile a politician determined to make a difference. Sometimes, you know, like you think, oh, this is just too big, this is too big. But, you know, every tiny little step forward is still a step forward. Somewhere east of Broome, south of Darwin, Carol Martin is back where her heart will always be. A land of vaulting skies, vast horizons and ancient secrets. Far from the complexities of politics and power. Where bulldust is just bulldust. Words are cheap, blood thicker than water and where promises, even the political kind, never should be lightly made. I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference to this community. I want to make a difference where it really counts. It's a year and a half since Carol made political history, with the Gallup Labor victory in the West becoming the first Aboriginal woman to take her seat in an Australian parliament. I have the honour of standing before you today as the elected member of Kimberley. The significance of this moment is not lost on me. Her prize, the toughest job in politics. The remote, sparsely settled, chronically troubled electorate of Kimberley. In the parliamentary break, she's on safari. A 2,000 kilometre swing across the top to chew the fat with constituents and feel the electoral pulse. How are you going? Nice How to see you. So how, yeah, good. Yeah, I'll have to get some Oh, not this time, mate. I'm uh, on my way through to Fitzroy. All right. Yeah. Shane Stewart runs the isolated roadhouse at Bolaire Bridge, two hours east of Broome. White, literate, skilled and employed, he is the antithesis of the local demographic. Of just 13,000 souls scattered over an area bigger than Victoria, half are black, unskilled and unemployed still caught in third world limbo where words like equality, justice and reconciliation sound hollow and insincere and where the social balance has barely moved in a hundred years. I've been up here, you know, like working in welfare for 20 years in the Kimberley and the issues that were here 20 years ago are still here today. Guess what guys, nothing's worked. We need change. It's all been said before, of course, with equal passion and determination. But not by the Honourable Carol Martin. Female, black, survivor, and anything but your standard politician with the standard political pedigree. Some people say, you know, like, you know, I've got more ass than class. <laughs> They're right in some things. <laughs> Her story begins more than 2,000 kilometres south of Kimberley country. Born the daughter of waterboard worker Bernard and Rose Pilkington, raised as part of a huge family system reaching from Perth to Manilia Station north of Geraldton. A runaway ward of the state at 12, over a bruise mark on her leg. That was from a, a, a strap, so uh, that was uh, enough for a uh, child protection application to go in. Assumptions were made that were false. Well, no, it did happen. Oh, okay, yeah, right. <laughs> but for bloody good reason. <laughs> Her parents separated in the aftermath and she stayed on the run for years, living rough and hiding with friends and family until the welfare dropped her case. Enough to shatter any child, 
the ordeal hardened Carol's determination to survive. If you are a survivor, then the world is out there. But if you're a victim, then the world will always oppress you and everybody that, uh, that comes in contact with you can see what you are and they'll exploit it. The healing process helped by the love of her life, a white fella builder called Brian. They met at Derby 20 years ago. I locked him in my house for three days so he got used to me. <laughs> but, you know, like my family laugh about it. We all laugh about it, but, you know, like I did not really abduct him. No, I mean, you know, like there would have had to be some consent there. He was a fairly willing prisoner. Yeah, well, he got the sack for that. It took three days passionate leave, he called it. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> well, she made it clear right from the word go. She was a career woman. She wasn't going to be the, the um, barefoot and pregnant housewife. You know, she, uh, and get in yeah, the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> to get in the kitchen and rattle those pots and pans is not on with her. <laughs> you know, there's <laughs> the crocodile in the sink. <laughs> Although she didn't finish school, Carol knew education was the key. Earning a degree in social work as her children came along. Bill is 15 now. Margaret Ann has a daughter of her own, and the tribe increases. As I say, I'm not angry anymore. That helps. <laughs> Waste of a lot of energy. <laughs> How did you get rid of that? How did you bury the anger? I just realised that if I was going to survive, I couldn't keep it. You know, and I didn't want to own it anyway. But 18 months into her political career, the honeymoon <laughs> is over. OK, guys. See you later, Mum. Yep. I'll be back Saturday. Carol's safari against the background of some ugly goings on. It's hard to sort of uh, come straight out and say racism. She's been vilified over plans to consolidate regional health services, received hate mail for supporting gay law reform, and been snubbed at local functions. Well, obviously, there is racism within the community, but that I don't think we can generalise to say that, uh, that uh, the Kimberley is racist. And then that, that's, it's been proven that it's not. But it is a region where the cultural divide takes physical form. At places like Halls Creek, where the main street marks a sort of no man's land between black and white. Where 70% of indigenous children under five have malnutrition and suicide is the leading cause of teenage death. You know, let's stop mucking around the edges and let's start dealing with what we really need to, which is poverty, not only in economic terms, but poverty of spirit. It's just on a hundred years since the last gunshots of resistance echoed through the gorges, and the Kimberleys too succumbed in this clash of cultures, old and new. The legacy of dispossession, a sort of lopsided peace, still fraught in places by ignorance, inequality, and mutual distrust. The interesting question around Carol Martin's success, how much of it is down to a remarkable individual and how much due to a long overdue wind of social change? Well, I've always believed that um, all the isms are the fear of what you don't know. So if you fear something, find out more and then it diminishes the fear. Like we know, we know and it. making a difference, she knows, will require cultural re-education on both sides of the divide. You've always told me straight out what you want me to do and I've done it. Do you want me to put this on the agenda of this government? That's my question. Yeah. But I won't do it without your clear direction. She has bad news for the elders at Fitzroy Crossing. The Law and Culture Centre is losing half its funding. The reason, a misunderstanding over the meaning of culture. To people like Spider, who has not a word of English, it encompasses law, land, language and spirituality. The funding body, it seems, was expecting ballet and opera. And the buck stops with Carol, who must serve them both. I think I'm a decent person, you know, and I think that I'm honest, that I've got integrity. Yeah. 
and in the wider context, she believes that's all that was ever needed to put things right, step by tiny forward step. That's the other thing, you know, when do you get out? When's enough enough? You know, and when have you achieved what you want to achieve? And that's, I suppose that's really what I need to do too. I need to look at what I can achieve in the time that I've got there and then uh, go fishing. Tom Collis reporting there. Back in a moment with a news update.